Many games involve two people and are often showing athletics or, or games involving physical strength and endurance. In this first sculpture by Judea Gutaliak, we have two contestants and they're pulling pieces of bone or it could be wood and the idea is to pull the other contestant out of position. The next sculpture is a finger pull game by Kane Ikaksak of Iglulik and that also was a grueling game and you would lock your shoulder and you would have to again pull the other person from the position. And then we have a miniature work by Rex Goose Kangoak of Holman Island of two individuals arm wrestling. On this side there are is an example of two Inuks wrestling by Simeone Shivarar Pick of Pervernatuk, Arctic Quebec. And then we have two examples of the Hyut Migak or head pull game where two contestants have a leather thong put around their heads and then again they have to pull the other person out of position. The first example in stone is by Isaac E. Tidlui and then there's an example in Adler by Luki Takugak of Iglulik. And the last game in this case or competition is called Situktak where the contestant has to squat on one knee and to see who can stay the longest. This example is by Napachi Ashuna of Cape Dorset. In this case, we have examples of manual dexterity involving one person. And on this side here, we have five examples of handstand. There is an example of a two handstand by Isaac E. Tidlui, another example of a handstand by Umalak Oshutsiak of Cape Dorset. And then we have three examples of a one arm handstand, the first one here by Mo Padluk of Kimirut a one-arm stand here by Rex Goose Kangoak. And this example here by Matthew Tunnelly is a wonderful example of balance, uh, how an artist can take a block of stone and carve a representational image and at the same time show such extraordinary balance. And here, the, the idea here is that the contestant has to stand on one hand and reach and touch a sealskin ball that's suspended above. In the middle, we have two examples, again, of the one-arm reach by Fred Ayak Trimble of Inuvik. And here is an example of the high kick, where a person hops on one foot and has to kick a seal skin ball suspended. This example here is a, actually, is a, it's a polar bear jawbone by Luki Erut, and inside, He's showing an example of the high kick. This small sculpture by Pitsiolak Kimmerpik from Cape Dorset is titled Alaskan High Kicker. Here, the contestant, sculpted in black stone, is trying to reach a fish hung from a pole made of antler. And on this side, we have other examples of string games. A favorite game was a type of pin and ring game Ajak in Inuktitut, in which a bone, sometimes with holes, is tossed into the air and caught on a pointed bone that is attached with a cord. Here we have an example by Silas Kiatjuak from Hall Beach. Silas has sculpted a face on each side of the bone. And here we have the string game called Ajarak by Silas Kiatjuak of Hall, Hall Beach. And this is an example of an older woman with her tattoos and she's making uh, uh, different uh, configurations with the string. And this was often used as entertainment and for storytelling. Silas sculpted a young person skipping with a rope made of sinew. Here we have a sculpture of the blanket toss or walrus hide toss, Nalukatak. This was carved by Jonas Faber, who lives in Summerland, BC now. And Jonas wanted to do something special for the Olympics, and he has named this the Spirit of the Winter Olympics. To place the sculpture in British Columbia, he has the Inuit riding a killer whale, and the Inuit is holding an Inukshuk, which is, of course, the symbol of the 
2010 Winter Olympic Games. And instead of having people surrounding uh, the blanket or the walrus hide, he has put Arctic wildlife because he wanted to show that all the north, all the wildlife, everybody is participating uh, in the spirit of the Olympics. So you have an example of a muskox, a narwhal, two bears, a bird, a walrus. You do have a family. And then here in front of me, there are two Inukshuks. Even the Inukshuks are participating in the Olympics. And throughout the sculpture, you see snowflakes. And each point of the snowflake is, is a small Inukshuk. And Jonas also embellished the sculpture with some semi-precious and precious stones. So he, he really has created the spirit of the Winter Olympics. In this case here, we have examples of people having fun. One such activity was the making of funny and bizarre faces in order to make others laugh. This sculpture by Isaac E. Tidlui from Cape Dorset shows a face with a tongue stuck out. The next two sculptures are by Ricky Jaw of Cape Dorset, who has sculpted two examples of a person riding on a sled. One is larger than the other, and perhaps we have a father and a son having fun together. The sculpture on the right by Isaac E. Tidlui shows a boy sliding on the snow while sitting on a piece of seal skin. In this case here, we have two examples of a game called Tulaku Ojunik, pretending to be a raven, the two sculptures in the middle here. And the first one is by Nulialuk Kimrupik of Kimirut. And the other example on the right here is by C.P. Ipili. And the idea of this game is that the parka, the arms of the parka were put inside out, and the back was tied. And the contestants would hop around, uh, bent over, uh, to imitate a raven. And it is believed that perhaps uh, this particular exercise uh, helped to build stomach muscles and back muscles for the enduring uh, job of having to spend many, many hours over a seal hole wait, waiting to catch a seal. On this side, uh, we have, again, examples of games and contests that were used for entertaining. Uh, and here we have an example of throat singing. Uh, it's called Kirpak. And the first sculpture is by Archie Ishulatuk from uh, Iqaluit. And uh, the sculpture is in stone, and the faces uh, are done in bone. Then we have a smaller example in antler by Rex Goose Kangoak of two women throat singing. And over here, we have an example of two families who have been out on the ice, and each one has built their own snow house. And the women are throat singing, and the men are drum dancing. This is by Luki Erut. And a second example over here of a drum dance contest, also by Luke Erwood. Over here, we have a case that has many modern games. And this is the link with the Vancouver 2010 Olympic Games. The first sculpture, uh, we have an ice skating bear by Moses E. Pudigu, a bear on skates. We have an example of hockey called Slapshot by Isaac E. Itidlui of, of a person with a hockey stick and a little puck out in front. And of course, uh, the second uh, game of Canada curling, another example by Isaac E. Tidlui with a person ha who has a broom and the rock in front. There is an example of skiing, again by Isaac E. Tidlui. And over here we have a speed skater, also by Isaac E. Tidlui, who actually made quite a few sculptures dealing with sports in anticipation of the Winter Olympics. The sculpture in the middle is a bronze by Abraham Angik Rubin, who had been commissioned to do 12 sculptures dealing with winter sports. And the first one that you see here is of ski aerials, where the skier is already upside down in the air. And then we have an example of skateboarding by Jamesy Pitsiolak of Cape Dorset. He is a master sculptor who creates miniatures in stone of everything and anything in our contemporary culture. Jamesy made the boot laces using copper wire. 
And then we have other examples of people having fun, including two sculptures of a shoulder ride. On the left, we have a 1958 sculpture by an unidentified artist from Subluk of a child riding on his mother's shoulders. Monica Ikalik of Baker Lake created this version of a shoulder ride. She has only sculpted a head between the rider's legs, and the viewer does imagine that there is a person beneath. Now, we have a miniature sculpture in ivory by Silas Gyakjurak of two boys playing leapfrog. This is another sculpture in Serpentang by Isaac E. Tidlui of two people participating in a wheelbarrow race. And finally, we have a work by Napachi Sharkey from Cape Dorset of snowmobiling, which was titled Joyriding. This exhibition is only a glimpse of the many stories being told in the arts by the many talented northern artists of Canada. And I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Thank you very much.